Today, we're going to talk about the future of sustainable agriculture as it applies to poultry. Let's go. So about three or four times a week, I'll get asked this question and it's always worded, Luke, do you ever think you're going to get into chickens? And my answer is always the same and it's no, not because I don't like chickens, but because I can't. We don't have enough land and the city that we live in won't allow it. And so that is the reasons why. But I really do love chickens for the ability to not only provide food, but also reduce waste. They'll take, I mean, not only just waste, but I mean, in a garden, keeping this a garden related video, in a garden, they can do some damage on some pests. Not only that, but weed seeds as well. They'll eat weed seeds, pests like slugs, aphids, different um, beetles and things like that. They'll do a number and I think that's an awesome resource that can reduce the amount of pesticides you have to use. Even if you're using organic pesticides, they're about the most organic pesticide you can get and you get eggs as a benefit. Um, not only that, but if you don't eat the eggs, and, uh, and you just want to keep them as pets, you know, they also produce great fertilizer for your garden. And it's a total win-win from all angles, but because we can't have them, um, I was a little bit discouraged and I started doing some research for some other options. And one of my options that I stumbled across was pretty unlikely. Now you're probably thinking, was that option quail? Well, it was one of my options, but it was not the option that I settled on. The option that I actually settled on was morning dove. Now you might be thinking, hold on, Hold the phone, morning dove. Why morning dove? Well, I'll get into it. The reason why I didn't go with quail though is because quail tend to be very small eggs. So since our family does eat eggs, you need a lot of them to do to get anything. And also the, the birds, if you're harvesting them for meat, are very, very small. Now we don't harvest our morning doves for meat, but I'm just saying that they're very small birds. And also um, you have to cage them. You can't free range quail, or at least not on this amount of land. And I didn't want to get into that. I wanted no fences, nothing at all. I wanted total free range. And because our city does not allow any uh, fencing of poultry, being you could, eat, you could not even fence a quail, we couldn't do that either. So I needed something without a fence whatsoever. And quail are an easy target for things like predatory birds, um, like owls and stuff like that, but also cats and dogs. I mean, like there's so many, even neighborhood animals that would prey on a quail. We had to go with something else. And that's why I actually stumbled upon morning dove. Morning doves lay a beautiful egg, which I'll show you. Um, the first shot I'm going to show you actually is, uh, is them free ranging. The next thing that they do, so they lay really nice eggs, but they also don't tear your crops up. A lot of people don't like chickens in their garden because if you have nice crops, like a beautiful head of lettuce, those chickens don't care about your nice head of lettuce. They'll just shred it up to, you know, to smithereens and you're left with nothing. But on the other hand, morning doves don't do that. They're very docile feeders. They'll kind of just peck around. And uh, as you can see from that shot, I mean, they, they just kind of peck and, and they do their own thing, but they don't just annihilate and shred. Another thing that they don't do is they don't chicken scratch. Chicken scratch is notorious for being messy and crazy. It's great for cultivation of a brand new lot. Um, like if you're just putting in a garden for the first time, it's wonderful. But if I am, uh, you know, if I am having raised beds in an established garden and I don't want soil to be out of my raised beds, they'll do that. They'll just kick the soil right out of the raised bed as they dig, you know, dig these uh, ditches trying to find these grubs and stuff in the soil. They'll do that. Whereas morning doves won't do that at all. Morning doves just are very soil, they're very um, surface feeders, and that's awesome. And they also do take care of weed seeds, which dramatically cut down on the amount of weeding that I have to do. Um, and this has been really a, an integral part of, uh, of, our, of our kind of sustainable food system that we're starting to establish on, in our garden here. They also will stay in one place once they lay eggs. So once they've laid eggs, uh, we actually have a resident kind of a, a resident flock of almost 20 morning doves on our property that we've been raising for the past two years. And it's been a really great asset to us that we just haven't talked a lot about because 
it's just not, it's not common, you know, and, and it finally got to the point where I figured, you know what, it's gotten to the point, let's talk about it, let's, uh, let's make this more commonplace because I really do truly think that morning doves could be the future of sustainable agriculture. And it's not like a dove, it's not like a white dove, so it's not like the symbol of peace. They're still beautiful birds, I think they're absolutely incredible, um, but they're, you know, they're not a dove. They're two separate birds all together. Um, and so, you know, for me, it's not an issue of morality. I mean, you can, if you can take a chicken egg and eat it, or you can take a quail egg and eat it, there's, there is no difference. They're just birds at the end of the day. And like I said, we don't harm the, the morning doves for meat, but I want to show you what we got going on because they did just, uh, lay eggs. I actually took a picture this morning and shared it over on Facebook, kind of talking about what we were doing. And there was a huge, there was an awesome response for it, um, for this video where they said, you have got to do a video on this because I don't think it's widely talked about and it really isn't. Um, and that was them in their bed. And the picture you see here is actually a, a picture of our lettuce bed. We left our lettuce bed kind of just go uh, dormant and left all the lettuce there because the morning doves actually blend in. Um, believe it or not, in that picture, there's actually six morning doves hiding out in that bed there. Those are all the females from the flock that all, uh, they all lay eggs in that bed because they're, they're very camouflaged there. And I do that for that purpose specifically because they, um, you know, they, they'll lay, basically they'll lay their eggs right in that, that bedding material, if you will, which are just the old lettuce leaves. Um, so, uh, like I said, I've got some eggs now that are ready to harvest. I figured I'd go show you guys what those look like. And, um, Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are sticking with me. I think it's a really fun thing. And if you guys are enjoying, make sure to hit the like button. I would uh, strongly suggest you to do that because it really helps this video get spread around to other people. And like I said, when you're talking about topics that are not commonly talked about, it requires community effort to spread this around. So let's make this commonplace. There's a lot of benefits to morning doves. Um, there's a ton of them. So uh, let's go check out the eggs and, uh, and see what we got today. All right, it is a beautiful day out. So I'm really excited to show you guys what I've got going on here because I think once I show you just how easy it is, all of you are gonna wanna try this. This is definitely one of the most simple ways to uh, just increase your food production on your property without breaking any local laws whatsoever. Like I said, these are totally free range birds. Um, and we were talking about all the time about how free range is so healthy and it's so, um, I mean, it's so, uh, it's so trendy these days that you have to, you, you, know, you pretty much have to go free range if you're going to do anything at all because it's so healthy, there's no antibiotics. I mean, there's just so many benefits to this that um, I figure why not show it? So um, I'm gonna show you what their bedding area looks like first because they don't bed all year long. They only bed three times a year because they're not like chickens that lay eggs all the time. So check it out and uh, let's, see, uh, let's see what's going on. All right, so like I said, I've got this old lettuce bed here. Normally we'd clear it up and normally it'd have the plastic greenhouse cover on it, but I let all the plants die back and turn all brown and brittle because that, that way the, the birds actually blend in and feel more, uh, feel more at home here and they aren't as vulnerable to predators. That's what all the blogs were telling me and that's what I, that's what I did. A lot of them were suggesting using uh, old corn stalks, but obviously I pulled all those out. So I left the best thing that I had and it seemed to work just fine. But I've got here, um, I see one right off the bat. Um, you can see here, it probably, can you see it? Uh, right there, I've got one. There, so it's quite a lot smaller than a chicken egg, but it's a lot bigger than a quail. Like I was saying, there's a whole ton of benefits to that. Um, and then there's some, there were some that were over here, but there's no eggs yet. They'll probably come back in the next couple days for that. But um, I don't know if I see, oh, no, there is one over here. There's one over here. They don't lay that many eggs either. But um, but when they do, you know, I mean, they'll lay up to three eggs. So uh, these ones are just a little, a little light today, but we've gotten sometimes three to six eggs out of a, out of a laying session. And out of 20 birds that we have here, uh, you know, you'll get a fair amount. You'll get a fair amount for sure. But um, I think that's it for sure, because that's, that's the only place where they're laying eggs. Unless sometimes they lay them over here too. They like these, like they like all these uh, these loose oak leaves. But I don't see any. I'll set those down there for a second. Yeah, I don't see any. I don't see any more. Probably shouldn't probably shouldn't move it around too much there. 
but yeah, I think, I think that's just two for the day. But as you can see, not too bad. We're gonna take these in. I really wanna show you what the yolks look like because I think that'll be the, the selling point for sure. Alrighty, so I got the eggs right here. I just gave them a quick rinse off because they had a little dirt from the garden, but I'm ready to crack them so I can show you what the yolks look like. I don't think, I don't think you'll have any, any idea. Yeah, come on over here, Geneva, you can see. The eggs came out looking almost like something that, you, uh, that you've probably seen before. Now what we're gonna do, uh, we'll just use these in our, in our cooking here. So I'll make up a, uh, I don't know, I don't know what I'll make up, but I wanted to show you guys what these look like because I think it's really important to, to highlight just how much of a, a beneficial resource this is. So that's how we've been incorporating morning doves into our sustainable agriculture regiment here on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you do try it or at least look into it because like I said, the benefits just so outweigh the negatives. I mean, they are just such a beautiful bird. They lay great quality eggs. Uh, they take care of the pests in the garden. They don't over scratch the soil. They don't decimate your crops. They're totally free range. There's no laws against them. The neighbors don't mind them. They have a beautiful call. They're just all around total win, 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 win. So I'd recommend checking it out. And as always, April Fools.